In this demonstration, we show how to create a box plot using the TI-8384 family of graphing calculators. For demonstration purposes, we will use the um, scores given in the Chapter 2 Summary Worksheet Problem Number 3. So it's, it's these 21 numbers here. Um, Okay, so, and I, I use the answers in the back of the book so we can compare our answers to those obtained with the graphing calculator. So the first thing we would do, go over to the graphing calculator. We would first hit the stat button. You would need to enter all these numbers into a list. So under edit, we would hit enter. And we would have to put all these numbers into this list. You know, if we wanted to just cover up list one, we would go 48, enter 51, enter 55, enter 61, enter 66, enter, and so on. Um, this has already been done in list three, so I'm just going to access list three when we create the plot. Um, something worth noticing here. Um, in this list, I've ordered the numbers from lowest to highest. You do not have to do this in the TI. It will take care of that for you. Um, okay, so suppose we want to make our box plot, right? We have all of our numbers in list three. Well, we actually want to get up to here. This this blue um, line here says stat plot. So that's what we want to get. So we have to hit the second button and then stat plot. Okay, and so this gives us number of plots and basically we just have to choose one of them so we'll choose the first turn it on and again it's going to be on so we're going to keep that on and and when we come down to type there's all different types there's um, you know dot plots line plots histograms this is a box and whiskers that has outliers that's not the one we're going to go for we want this one the box and whiskers so when we go down to type we get there by hitting the right arrow key. So we go over, 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 and over. Now our box plot is blinking. That means it's ready to go. When I go down to my list, and it's requesting what list. And I want list three. That was already in there, but it might not be. So to get list three, I just go second and then three. The L3 is right above that three. So L3 is ready to go. You leave frequency right at its default value of 1. And now we want to graph it, so we're going to hit this graph button. And look, nothing. That is not what you wanted. Um, so it's worth noticing that these scores are way over here in the, you know, between 48 and, and 100. So our x-axis doesn't even go there. So we want to change our, our axis. We want to change our window. Right, so when you go to the window, we're going to click on the window button here, or press it. And what you can see is x is going from negative 10 to 10, and that's certainly not going to hit these values out here. So to replicate this screen that we have on the right, we'll let x go from 0, and then we go down to x max is uh, 120. And hit enter. X scale will be 1. Now the Y min and max, you can change. The graph doesn't change that much regardless of what you do to these values. Um, but you can at least start the min at 0, and that makes it take up a little bit more of the screen. Okay, so now we have a viewing window that should accommodate the graph, and we go back and hit graph again. And there it is. There is our box plot. Now if you want to find out what these values are, you can press the trace button. And notice you have a blinking box with an X through it here on the median. And so the median is 76. And that is exactly what we got here. Right? Now if you want to get Q1, the first quartile, you hit the left arrow. Now it's on Q1. And it has 67. Notice we got 68. And this is going to happen fairly often because the TI uses a slightly different algorithm for calculating Q1 and Q3 than we do in the textbook. 
Uh, the numbers should always be close unless you don't have, um, unless there's some big gaps in your data. But in this case, it can happen, and it does happen. Um, the Q1 calculated with the TI is different from that calculating use, calculating uh, Q1 using the 25th percentile. Right? Notice we got 68. Um, the same problem occurs over here when you trace over to the um, Q3, the upper side of the box plot, and it is 87 according to the TI, and we got 86. But again, we calculated this using the 75th percentile, and the TI does it slightly differently. Um, sometimes it'll agree, but sometimes it won't, and so you have to be careful for that. Uh, but for the most part, it gives you a decent looking box plot, and you can trace out to find the different uh, elements of the five number summary. You know, the max is 98, so we're in agreement there. You go over to the min by hitting the left arrow key, and the min is 48. So it gets pretty much everything. There just might be some discrepancy at Q1 and Q3. Um, and it does happen, so that's worth um, watching out for. So that's it. That's how you make a box plot with the TI. Quite simple.